So welcome again to our course, How to Start Your Online Startup. Okay, we've been talking about social media marketing. And to wrap it up, today we're going to be finishing off with video marketing. Okay, mainly in video, we're always talking about YouTube first and everybody else next. Okay, because they've been kings. So that's how we'll start off. Okay, um, I hope everybody understands what video marketing is, first of all. Yes, we're all clear, right? And we already talked about what the potential of video is going forward, and I think we'll again rediscuss this today. So, like I said, what we're going to begin with is YouTube itself, okay? And why are we beginning with YouTube? I think some of these numbers I had shared initially also, and I'm going to share it again. With an average click-through rate of 1.84%, video ads are probably one of the most ROI-driven than any other ads that you see out there. Okay, uh, maybe you look at Facebook, uh, you look at Bing, uh, you look at um, Twitter. Uh, they're all launching video ads more and more because this is the newest medium uh, to market out there. Okay, this is a stat that we had covered earlier also. Okay, now these are some new stats that is referring to YouTube. Okay, now why are we talking about YouTube? Okay, total number of people who use YouTube today are about 1.3 billion across the globe, okay? There are 300 hours of videos that are uploaded every minute on YouTube. Can you believe that? 300 hours of videos get uploaded on YouTube every minute, okay? There are almost 5 billion videos are watched every day on YouTube, 5 billion, okay? Then, Total number of hours video watched on YouTube each month, 900 million. I'm just setting perspective why video marketers first concentrate on YouTube and then everywhere else. Because this is where most of the audience is today. But some of the other figures, only about 10,000 of those YouTube videos generate about 1 billion views, okay? So even though there's millions and millions of YouTube videos out there, only 10,000 of them generate a total of 1 billion views. So you can imagine what kind of traffic those videos are getting. Okay? Now, average number of mobile YouTube videos per day, a billion. A billion videos through mobile on a daily basis. Again, setting perspective that not only is YouTube anymore a desktop laptop, but it's also mobile-based. Okay? Then, Mobile users spend approximately 40 minutes on each average session. Can you believe that? So every time somebody from a mobile accesses YouTube, on average, they're spending 40 minutes. That means there are people that probably spend hours, and there are probably people that spend five or 10 minutes also. But on average, 40 minutes, okay? Yes, absolutely, huge number. Just captive audience on, on, on uh, uh, YouTube, okay? More than half of YouTube views come from mobile de devices, okay? This is something that we've been saying again and again. Mobiles are changing the way we are, the way we're going to be in the future, okay? YouTube saying the same thing. Half of the views come from mobile devices themselves, okay? YouTube is seen in 76 different languages, okay? So it's not only about English, it's not about Hindi for us, but it could be Marathi, it could be Gujarati, it could be whatever else. Okay, 76 different languages covering 95% of the total net population. Okay, now, since 2007, and I think this is something that a lot of you may be interested in, how do I monetize YouTube? You know, you were talking about such large numbers. Not only do I use it as a marketing medium, but if I put videos out there, can I realistically make money from it? And there are some figures YouTube has paid $1.25 billion till date from 2007 to get rights of videos that are hosted on YouTube. Imagine the type of business they're running when they're paying right holders $1.25 billion, okay? Since 2007, it's only been eight, nine years. The world's highest paid YouTube stars earned a combined of $54.5 million last year. So the people that monetize their videos on YouTube last year, the highest ones of them totaled to approximately $54.5 million. I mean, think about money generated, okay? 
And this one, Pew Dai Pai, which is their largest YouTube guy, right? This is the guy that earned the most money in a year. Earned $12 million last year from YouTube by monetizing their videos, okay? So not as, the opportunity is not only can you market your business, your venture on YouTube, but you can actually make YouTube a venture or video marketing a venture. I'm, I'm saying YouTube because so much traffic is driven from there. But ultimately, video marketing itself can be a venture for you. Okay? Now, we talked about this number also. 7% of global users from YouTube are from India. Okay? Uh, so about 70 million users that YouTube has in India. This is as of 2015. Okay? So not only are we looking at those large numbers, but we have to remember that a good percentage of it anyway is from India. So even if we look at that number from seven to growing up to 10%, that means all the numbers we discuss, almost 10% gets contributed to India. But when it comes to those paid monetized users on YouTube, there are very few out of India, okay? These mostly are bloggers, okay? These are people that are sitting in the US and other countries that are creating videos and content only for YouTube, okay? They don't look at anything else. YouTube is their business, okay? Now, out of the top five channels that are on YouTube, you'd be surprised to know that T-Series and Colors TV are in the top five YouTube channels, okay? They're Indian. Now, you will not imagine that, but realistically, these are numbers from YouTube. T-Series releases its songs, its music videos, et cetera, on YouTube. And if you go there today, what you'll find is compilation of all kind of music there, okay? People are less concerned with the video that's playing. Maybe they're more concerned with the audio, but ultimately, T-Series gets huge amount of traffic. What this is saying is they get 565 million views because that number times 1,000. 565 million views, huge, if you think about it. Colors TV gets 507 million views. And you know, Colors has its own platform to deliver video. So what they're doing is they're using YouTube as an entry point. Because most people will first come to YouTube to find things, because that's how we are. Like we go to Google to search, we go to YouTube to search for a video. So this is a great entry point for colors, because if you, if you play any of those videos, what you'll realize is they're actually asking you to go to their site and play the rest of the video. They're actually not even serving the whole video on YouTube. Again, great opportunity when it comes to video online, especially YouTube. Again, two examples from India. And if you look at the first one, I just wanna kind of point out, it says Ryan Toys Review, do you see that? So what do you think that is? So basically, uh, this guy will be doing the unpacking and talking about the reviews of the uh, toy, whatever has been made, and kids are basically there. So it, it's covering the kids and the family itself. So the views would be high on that basis. Absolutely. So imagine that one of the top channels on YouTube is somebody that's unpacking and talking about some toys. Okay? Look at that. 612 million views. I mean, come on. Crazy amounts of numbers in there. Okay? So just giving you, WWE, a lot of you may know, World Wrestling, whatever, Webs and uh, Tiara's Toy Monster Compilation, again, things that relate to kids, all of this entertainment is what's kind of riding on top in these channels, okay? And you can actually search, you can find more channels that are doing good to see which one and why they're doing good, but it's mostly entertainment related, somewhere related to entertainment, okay? now. Why are people successful on video marketing? And this is not just YouTube. This can relate to any video marketing that we're talking about, okay? Something you all need to remember. When we were talking about content, we even said it, right? We talked about unique, compelling, right? Same thing when it goes to video. You need to generate curiosity with your unconventional videos, okay? I saw an example while I was doing some research of some monkey video. Now, it had nothing to do with the brand. So when people end up on that video, right, they're like, well, what is this? This is different. And that's what got people to stay 
look at the video further, okay? That's unconventional, okay? And you know what my belief is? I don't think you should be scared to try something unique on YouTube. Okay, it's not about, hey, my, it's gonna ruin my brand. Yes, if you do, you know, there's some things you cannot do, but there's a lot of other things that you can do on YouTube and just try it. Okay, unconventional videos should get you more people viewing it, okay? Make sure you research your keywords. This is just like SEO, okay? Because Google is gonna pick it up. YouTube is a Google company, it's gonna help in your search engine optimization, your videos will also appear in the search results. If you guys have gone out and gone recently do some search on Google, you'll actually see some of the video links there. That's because Google is picking it up from YouTube and showing it to you. So it's very important we research the keywords we wanna go after. The other thing about keyword is that will tell you what the audience is looking for. So your video should not necessarily be your business or the product or service you're marketing, but it could also be what the audience is looking for. Maybe drive them that way. Engaging and educating videos. Now, what is the purpose of the videos, or video marketing for us? Why are we doing video marketing, right? Are we just doing it so that people know about our brand? Usually not. We wanna ultimately get a lead from it, right? Any marketing we do, we wanna lead from it. Now, if you make the video engaging and educating, and people click on it, there's probably more likelihood that they would be pre-qualified leads. Rather than simply just putting something about the brand, just any video out there, any content out there, okay? So you need to make sure the videos are engaging and educating. If you look at any of the top brands that are doing well on uh, YouTube or other platforms, it's only because their videos are engaging and educating. Now, if you talk about the toy guys, let's talk about the toy guy, what is it? It's engaging and it's educating. Because one of the challenges, and I don't know if you realize in toys, is when you open it, how do you unpack it? Because they've got all of these twists and tacks on it. You don't know, some of them require a screwdriver, right? Some of them don't, but I don't know that. And you know what, most of us are not willing to read the manual. We're just not. Very few of us do but not all. So it's educating and engaging videos and that's why you probably see them at top, okay? When it comes to T-series, if you look at the, the playlist that they have and the videos that they're engaging, you know what, they're not, from what research I was doing, they're actually not even putting videos of single songs. They're mostly promoting compilations with very nice thumbnails, right? They got an attractive woman on the thumbnail, right? The, the title says something like top 20 Bollywood dance numbers or whatever, right? These are more the way they're marketing it, okay? So engaging and educating. Then I think one of the biggest things you'll have to do once when you get to video marketing is can you encourage sharing? YouTube and others provide a way for you to put a little uh, sharing button on your website, on your other places, and you can actually share the videos. The other thing you can do is, like it says, you can embed videos on your website and, your S and it helps your SEO. So you can actually put a YouTube embedment on your website, okay? And it's definitely gonna work better on your SEO as well, okay? The other thing a lot of people have been doing is they put their videos in their emails, links to their YouTube in their emails, right? That's another way to share, okay? There's a lot of ways that you can share those videos. Okay? But you have to encourage people to share. Okay? So people that are coming to your site, coming to your app, whatever, you need to make sure they're gonna go out and share this with, with somebody else. Now, they'll do it if the first one is true or if the third one is true. So either it generates curiosity because it's just an kind of unconventional video or if it's an engaging and educating video. Now, when it comes to YouTube, there are some best practices that go around it. One of them, and the first and foremost, is, and I'll just show you um, what the channel page looks like. You've got to optimize your channel page, okay? This has a banner, and it has some few clickable links. You need to make sure that you're able to set them properly, because when people come, and even if they find a video that's engaging or useful, what they'll do is they'll click your name, 
because they want to go see your channel. Usually, that's the second option they'll take. They'll go to your channel. Now, when they come to your channel, if the channel is not set properly, then they're going to say, you know what, there's not a professional company. Let's forget about this. Right? Let me not see their other videos. Your other goal is, once they come to the channel, for them to go to the other videos you have. Right? That's how you'll create that effect of actually being in front of them all the time. Because when they need something, they'll come back to your channel. We have people here that are in B2B. Right? And a lot of B2B companies uh, use YouTube for this purpose. So even if you're in industrial machines, for instance, right, you can actually put videos related to those industrial machines and what are the uses on YouTube. Now, if somebody finds that engaging and clicks on your channel, they would probably want to see other machines that you have videos for. Now, if, but if your channel is not set properly, you're not going to be able to do that. Okay, So make sure your channel is set properly. You set the banner. Okay, You set the four clickable options. They're called call to actions. Okay. Secondly, I just said when T-Series puts a video out there, they have a very attractive thumbnail. Thumbnail is that little thing you first see before playing, OK? Almost after they read what the video is, the other thing that attracts the person is that thumbnail. And sometimes that's what attracts the person, is that thumbnail that you put out there, OK? So if you're an entertainment brand, obviously, you make it as entertaining as possible. If you're a business brand, you may actually partially um, you know, brand it with your logo, partially have it the way that you want to portray what this video is all about. Okay? So because between the title of the video and the thumbnail of the video, people are going to decide if they're going to click on it or not. Okay? So thumbnail has to be proper. Optimize your video for keywords. Now, do you realize that when you upload a video into YouTube, especially, it actually creates a transcript for you? I don't know if you noticed that or not. So create a YouTube account create a channel, and then upload any video. What it's going to go out and do is create a transcript, so the words behind what the video is saying. OK? Yes, it automatically does that. OK? Now, if your keywords are part of your video, obviously it's going to be in the transcript, right? Which will affect your SEO, right? Because Google is going to pick it up. And it's going to say, hey, it's in the transcript, meaning it's also on the video. By the way, Google can also listen to the audio itself. It doesn't need uh, the transcript, but it can actually figure it out from the audio. But still, let's say it's part of the transcript, then Google is going to get, get you better SEO. Secondly, in YouTube itself, when people search for that particular keyword, they can find it. There are ways to put keywords on a, on a video also. So you can actually say this video. But it's better to also have it part of the video. Because if you're saying that the video is about e-commerce, but it's not. And when the transcript comes out, there's not even a mention of the word e-commerce. That doesn't work. And YouTube is not going to give you a result in that search if somebody searches for e-commerce. Next thing, and I think there's several sub points under this. Uh, analyze your competitors. Because, like I said before also, you get a lot of insights from what other people are doing. Right? It would take you a long time to learn. Right? You would have to go through the efforts yourself. But if you were to look at your competitors, you would actually figure out a lot of things. Right? Things like, what is the best time to upload? Because you can see what their times their uploads happen, okay? and how many likes they got on it. So that tells you the best time to upload. Then, best day to upload. Is it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Is it a holiday? What is it? And you know what? Because this is different by industry and what product and services you have, best to look at your competitor because they're in your product and industry, right? So your competitor's best time to upload to get comments, best date to upload to get comments, OK? So again, you look at all of these different things. What about the video duration? If the video is long versus short, how does it affect things, OK? What about duration? as far as engagement is concerned. So are people engaged to longer videos? Are people engaged to shorter videos? And what you'll find, by the way, in history, is that there, people do not engage quickly to longer videos. Okay? Because if somebody sees the video being one hour and 50 minutes, first thing they're saying is, do I even have the time for it? 
If I don't have the time for it, let me leave it. But if the video says, you know what, five minutes, let me try it. So what a lot of the marketeers do is they have multiple versions of the video out there. They have a version which is a five minute version or a two minute or three minute version. And then it gives a link back to the full video. It says to view the full video, click here. Okay, so again, duration of the video. And then most use words in captions. These are those keywords. What are the words that they use? Because if they're doing well, you might as well do the same thing. Optimize your video for keywords. You say something about key, key e-commerce. Yeah. That will be a normal captions will be there or thumbnails. Or it, it should be part of the video also. The speaker should. It should be part of the video as well. Because being part of the caption, being part of keywords is fine. But how does it YouTube know that the video you really put versus what you're saying is actually the same? So it also should be part of the video as well. Okay, but the search engine can capture the yes. statements yes. of the speaker also. Absolutely. There's actually a concept in YouTube. I don't know if any of you have seen it. How many of you actually use YouTube? You watch videos on YouTube. Who didn't raise their hand? Who? You, you don't watch YouTube videos? You watch? You gotta raise your hand. Who doesn't watch YouTube videos? You don't watch YouTube videos? Well, he's one of the few left, right? So don't worry. After this, you'll start watching for your business at least. Um, I don't know, when you watch videos, do you realize at times on the right-hand side, do you see an exclamation mark? Do you see an eye, sorry? Not an exclamation, you see an eye? Have you, some of you have seen the eye? It looks like something like this on the right-hand side. When you click the eye, this kind of thing opens up, okay? So if you haven't, go to YouTube, start watching some videos. On the right-hand side, you see an eye for information. When you click that, something like this opens up, right? You see where it says Instagram tutorial? Something like that opens up. And what that is called is an interactive card. This is a new technology that, uh, or, or a new way of marketing that Facebook has launched. Obviously, it's chargeable, but there's huge benefits of using this. So if you look at this one, the video playing in the back may be something else. But here it's saying that if you want to upload to Instagram from a computer, watch this tutorial. Okay? Now, what happens is, there's several ways to use these cards. One way is you can drive traffic to your website. So as your video is playing, right, you can actually have a card on the right-hand side that will drive traffic. That'll tell people why they should go to your website. Maybe, let's talk about our uh, equipment manufacturer that I was referring to. They have a video playing on what the equipment can do, right? That machinery, the heavy machinery that they have, what it can do. Now on the side, if the card also says, hey, if you're interested, click here. Because for more information, click here. Or something along that line. It'll take somebody to a website. There's also options to actually grow your email list. You can actually put an option there that says, sign up for my newsletter. I'll give you an, I'll give you an uh, example. Let's say that you're searching for videos on how to knit. Knit a sweater, right? Great. Now. You learn how to knit a sweater. And I'm, I'm sure most guys here will think, hey, why would I be knitting a sweater? Uh, but hey, maybe you like knitting a sweater okay, in your free time. So let's say I learned how to knit, knit a sweater. Now, what I want to know is what else? So one thing I can do, uh, if I am the producer of the video, I can give you a link and this says sign up for my newsletter if you want to know more techniques. Or sign up for my newsletter if you want to know the latest and greatest designs. So. What will people do? They will actually sign up because the video relates back to that particular topic. Thirdly, you can promote related material. Let's say the video playing is for one type of product. You can actually promote another type or a related material right on the card. Okay? Because the cards can be changed to whatever. That image, that text can be changed to whatever. And if you go to YouTube and just click on those eyes, what you'll see is all different types of cards all different types, okay? You can see ones to sell your product and services. It can actually say, hey, this is the price. Would you wanna buy this product? Maybe in line the video, you have a product that's coming up. You can actually have a card appear, right? And the card can actually sell the product. So let's say the video is about, let's say the movie Doom. 
right? And uh, you've got uh, Amir Khan wearing that hat. And Yash Raj Films was selling that hat. Would have been a best place while the promos are playing there. Say, hey, you want to buy this hat? Purchase it. So there you can sell your product or services as well. Okay. Then if you want to create donation drives, probably one of the best ways, you can actually have a video playing of the social cause. Say, hey, donate X amount here. Fan funding. This is something that is just starting to happen on YouTube. And again, but your video has to be qualified. Okay. So if the video is eligible, you can actually turn on an option for fans to fund you. So let's say you're going to launch a new music video, but you don't have the money. And people that have watched your videos earlier or the earlier videos, you can ask your fans to actually contribute to creating your next video. So it's like crowdfunding. Okay? This is the new, one of the newest options that they have. Then obviously they can also link to a crowdfunding platform. So maybe you're talking about why your business is one of the best out there, you want people to invest in it, et cetera. So we're going to be talking about funding. Right? One of the ways of funding is crowdfunding it. Now YouTube actually with these interactive cards gives you an ability to crowdfund. Okay? And then you can create polls, you can create voting. Okay? And most common way that most entertainment brands use it as a playlist. So if one video is playing, they'll show you the playlist there. Okay? So I know a lot of you would probably want to monetize YouTube as well, right? We've been talking about video marketing, you know, what other people do when they put their videos out, out there. But what is the process to monetize? Okay? There's a lot of things that are discussed. How do you monetize? Some people say that, listen, once I get a certain number of views, YouTube is going to start paying me, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's actually talk about all of that because that statement is actually not true. Okay? Yes, they do pay you, but there's a reason why they're paying you, and we'll talk about it. But let's first talk about the whole process of how YouTube works when it comes to advertising so you understand how you'll get paid for it. Okay? So if you look at this, as a creator, creators keep on uploading videos into YouTube. Right? On the other side, you have advertisers that are saying that, listen, I want to advertise my products or services on YouTube. Okay? Ultimately, what YouTube is doing is merging those two requirements okay, and showing it to the viewers. Okay? Simple. It's like any advertising. Here, content creators are creating it, uploading it. Here, YouTube has advertisers that want to advertise their product or service or whatever, or their brand. And They'll tell YouTube that. Ultimately, YouTube merges it and shows it to the viewer. And here are different ways that YouTube does it. Okay? There's something called a display ad. Okay? And let me show you an example of it first. If you look at the right-hand side of that video, you see where it says LE2? That's a display ad. And most of us have seen that on YouTube. Right? That comes on the right-hand side. Okay? Now, the ad shows next to the video and pays you lower. So if you are a content creator of the video. And if somebody is clicking on that ad, you get a rev share. OK? But it's lower paying ad format. So it's not, they have something called a true view ad. A true view ad pays more. And these right hand display ads pay you less. OK? Appears only on desktops and laptops. OK? If somebody sees it from mobile, it cannot be monetized, just the way it is. Okay? They've made a rule around this. You can't do much. Okay? There's several sizes. Okay? So you'll see this kind of size. You'll see a little bit smaller than this also at times. But there's a couple of sizes when it comes to display ads on the right-hand side. Next is something called an overlay ad. Okay? Let's see an example of it. There's a video playing in the background with uh, President Obama and Jack Ma. And you see, and actually it's not appearing perfectly, but there's an ad there, um, right? Do you see an ad? Like a banner? Unfortunately, uh, let's not talk about who the advertiser is, but they've done a horrible job of creating that ad. Because you know what? First of all, the overlay, you can't even see it. But this is what's called an overlay ad. If it's done properly, it would actually show right as part of the video. OK? So this is called an overlay ad. Now again, it across, it 
appears across the bottom 20% of the video. Okay, the way that YouTube has figured it out is gonna appear on the bottom of it, okay? Now, if you're a content creator, you try to make sure you don't put anything in that area. But if you go to YouTube and start looking at it, most content creators have not paid attention to this. They put anything, they put person's name, title, something there. Problem is, when this ad comes, you can't see that. Okay, the other is obviously a learning for us. If you're creating the ad, make sure that it's properly done because otherwise when it appears on that background, you're not gonna even see it. And this is how the ad actually, I tried this advertiser multiple times on multiple videos, all their ads are showing like this, okay? Now, currently appears only on desktops and laptops, okay? And views from mobile, TVs, gaming, et cetera, will not count as monetized. Okay, so you can monetize when it's being used from PCs, TVs, uh, gaming machines, and mobiles, et cetera. Okay, viewers can close the ad, so if you look at it, there's an X button on the right-hand side. They can close the ad at any time that they wish. Okay, then come the true view ads. Okay, these are ads that come in stream. Okay, the way they come, and most commonly, uh, they come in the beginning of the video, and after five seconds, user can skip it. But it plays for five seconds, and it looks something like this, okay? So when, when five seconds go by, it'll say skip ad. Even though this ad is more than 50 seconds, you don't have to view all of it uh, if you're not engaged to the ad. Uh, you only view partial of it. Um, and then after five seconds, you can decide to skip the ad, okay? So these are called true view in-stream skippable ads. Okay? There's also ads that you cannot skip. You sometimes watch videos, you realize they make you watch the whole ad. Okay? Those are ads you just cannot skip because you pay more for it. As an advertiser, you pay more for it. And as a content creator, you will make more money because it's, a, it's an ad that cannot be skipped. Okay? Currently, the only ad format that allows you to potentially monetize views from any viewing device so it could be a mobile, it could be gaming PC, uh, it could be your laptop, desktop, TV. Whenever the ad appears, it can be monetized, okay? Can be inserted before, during, or after. You can see this across all three of them. Most of them you will not see after, because as soon as the video is done, some, most people want to leave, right? But there are instances where you'll see it after. Most of the time you see it at the beginning or in the middle of it. Now I said exact same thing um, can come non-skippable and these um, play usually before a video and you can't skip them. You, they play full-fledged, the whole ad, okay? Um, viewers, viewers must watch the entire 15 seconds. So these are limited to 15 second ads, but they have to watch all 15 seconds of it. If you're, for instance, watching some rerun of a show, mostly Indian, soap opera shows, you'll realize in the middle of the show, they'll have an ad and you can't skip it, okay? Those are these kinds of ads, okay? Uh, like it says, can be inserted before, during, or after, okay? Uh, currently appears only on desktops and laptop computers and mobile devices, okay? So gaming PCs and uh, TVs and all cannot. Uh, v TVs and game consoles will count as non monetized right? So again, the only type of ad that can be monetized across every platform is the skippable video ad, okay? Right? So these are all the different types of ad. There's one last type of ad, okay? And this you guys see very often. It's called a mid-roll, right? Do you know what mid-roll ad is? Anybody take a shot at what a mid-roll ad is? For my understanding, it's similar to the ads you see on TV. Basically, in between the program, like there are sm small intermissions where these ads are showed, then the program starts again, like that kind of thing. Correct. It's, it's somewhat similar to that. Uh, what it does, it only applies to videos that are over 15 minutes, first of all. So if the video is lower than 15 minutes, they, YouTube will not insert uh, these mid-roll ads, okay? Um, and they're like TV commercials, obviously. They come in between, and you'll see this, like quick five-seconder, will come in, sometimes a 10 seconder will come in, okay? Uh, you can insert ad breaks at natural pauses, okay? So as a content creator, you can actually decide where you wanna insert them, okay? So if there are pauses you have, you can insert them there, like we have pauses here, 
right? We can insert ads in between there. Currently appears only on desktop and laptops and mobile devices. Again, gaming PCs and TVs still don't count as monetized. Okay? Okay. Most of you, I don't know if you know, YouTube and Google share 45% of their ad revenue from content with the content creator. So once you have a monetizable YouTube account, Google or YouTube will share 45% of the revenues with you. So it's not about how many hits am I getting. It's about how much revenue are those guys generating and they'll share it with you. It's a simple share. And obviously you have to trust them, right? If they say they got $1,000 this month, you'll make $450, okay? So the guy that was making $12 million, that means YouTube is generating another 15 or so million, maybe a little bit more than that, from ads that are appearing while his video or his content is being played, okay? But this most people don't know. Advertisers only pay when someone clicks an ad or watches for 30 seconds at least. So YouTube is tracking how long an ad is playing. Advertisers will only get charged if somebody clicks it or if it's at least played for 30 seconds, okay? And you, as content creators, can only get paid once that is true. So it is not about how many views are you getting. You can get 10 million views, but if there's no revenue generated from those 10 million views, you don't get paid anything. You only get paid 45% of the ad revenue generated. So whoever says that I can get a million views and I get paid directly, it doesn't happen that way. There are some revenues being generated in the back, okay? And that's how you get paid. One of the key points here for the guys that want to have a business around generating or monetizing from YouTube, is research keywords that they charge you more for. And have your content be around those keywords because you'll get paid more. Because the advertiser is paying more. So if a keyword is a very competitive keyword and they're charging that advertisers 50 rupees a click versus some that they charge the advertiser 10 rupees a click, you might as well choose the 50 one if you want to create a business around it. Okay? Because you'll get a 45% share of 50. Okay, so just keep, when we talk about those keywords, remember that also. That if you do keywords that are more competitive, you'll get paid more as a content creator. So 30 seconds, but what about those uh, video ads that only come for 15 seconds or below 15 seconds and don't actually have a clickable option? Then can you not earn revenue at all on them? No, so the 15 second is a completely different one, okay? These you're talking about the skip skippable ads, etc. right, where after five seconds, they stop watching the ad. So then what's the revenue system for uh, those kinds of ads? So they all have different, right? So that's why I said. So the paying system is different. Though it's 45, 45%, it's a straight out rev share. So if they're charging the person for 15 second ad, I don't know, whatever, 50, 10 rupees for every view or click, you'll get 45% of it. So they work two ways, right? They work CPC, just like Google, they work CPC, right? Cost per click and CPM, how many impressions Okay, for, so for skippable views actually do count. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's only like views aren't uh, directly related only in these kind of cases where the skippable ads are there. In the 15 second ads, views do count. Views do count. I mean, you have to have some view. It cannot be that, hey, the person closed the ad in the middle. If the person closes the ad in the middle, you're done. You don't get paid. Okay, so the unskippable 15 second ad, if they if close, I close the, the window, video, how will okay, you get then paid? Then you don't get paid, ah. okay. So Ashish, and um, the question was that I've also heard that it depends upon the country you are in, uh, the cost may like the, the cost may change, or the kind of content quality you have made uh, would again uh, the YouTube would play differently uh, in terms of the place you are, the country you are, and uh, so the, the it, it is all based on the revenue system, right? Yes, the country is definitely built into rev. So uh, if your video is meant for the U.S. and a U.S. advertiser has its ad there, then obviously you may get paid more versus if the advertiser was from India and he has lesser that he's paying, then you get paid less. So yes, it all goes back to revenue. How did they generate the revenue? Did they generate the revenue in the US? Did they generate the revenue in Europe? Did they generate the revenue in India? Where did they generate the revenue and what is the advertiser paying? So it all goes back to that one question, revenue concept. It is not about where the video is being served. And also, as you just mentioned, it's, it's CPM also, so views per mile. So maybe after 1,000 views are done, they do pay X amount probably. Yes. But 
it's not view view okay uh, ultimately have some ads some, to they in. have to have some duration of watch youtube is about watching correct so they have to have watch now remember the display ads we saw there is nothing to watch so they can work on CB, cpm very quickly because it's all about views yeah, right how many times it comes correct but the video ads that are playing it's all about the view how much are people actually viewing the video right thank you all right yeah it means uh, if you if, if in the us guys are watching our videos then you should have a proper tie up process must be there uh, so that the revenue you should get na no? so what happens in youtube is when you publish your videos you can actually specify where you publishing it okay okay you can say it's global you can say it's you only want it in certain countries okay, okay? so then it'll limit that now if you are going to say that listen my video can be global then the advertisers can be also global right you're then you can have a, if the video is being uh, ad, you know somebody from us is accessing the video then they'll also see the ads from that right if it is an indian specific then th that cannot be then visible obviously it can be only advertisers from india from india only yeah. but the, those videos can be seen in us also but you so again it will only show in the search options if okay. you say that the video is available everywhere if you okay. say the video is not available everywhere you cannot okay okay Okay. So somebody, if YouTube sees somebody coming from the U.S. and you say that I only want my video viewed in India, then only people in India can view it.